Hello again, Hound Dog here, and welcome to the video series featuring historic U.S. Navy aircraft from the past 100 years of carrier aviation. Today is April 1st, 1940, and we are flying in the Grumman XF-5F Skyrocket prototype. Later during our flight, I will also be highlighting two additional Navy carrier aircraft that were developed at about the same time as the Skyrocket. We are cleared for launch on the catapult. Controls are clear and flaps are full. Full power. Salute. Skyrocket design was for a lightweight aircraft powered by two 1200 horsepower Wright R1820 radial engines with propellers geared to rotate in opposite directions to cancel out the effects of each engine's torque and promising high speed with an outstanding rate of climb. The Skyrocket had a short fuselage of 29 feet that began behind the leading edge of the mid-mounted monoplane wing. The wing spanned 42 feet and folded for carrier parking. It had a twin tail assembly that featured a pronounced dihedral to the horizontal stabilizer. The tail dragger configuration main landing gear retracted into the engine nacelles and the tail well retracted into the fuselage. The Skyrocket weighed 10,900 pounds with a maximum speed of 383 miles per hour at sea level and a climb rate of 4,000 foot per minute to a service ceiling of 33,000 feet. The aircraft flew for the first time on 1 April 1940. Engine cooling problems arose in the initial flights, resulting in modifications to the oil cooling ducts. Further modifications were completed on 15 July 1941 and included reducing the height of the cockpit canopy, Replacing the twin 23mm Madsen cannons with four 50 caliber machine guns in the nose. Redesigning the engine nacelles. Adding spinners to the propellers. And extending the fuselage forward of the wing. The Grumman test pilot, Connie Converse, stated, and I quote, The flying qualities for the XF-5F were good overall. The counter-rotating props were a nice feature, virtually eliminating the torque effect on takeoff. Single engine performance was good, but rudder forces tended to be high in a single engine configuration. Spin recovery was positive, but elevator forces required for recovery were unusually high. All acrobatics were easily performed, and of course forward visibility was excellent." End quote. In 1941, Navy pilots tested the XF-5F in a fly-off against the Supermarine Spitfire, Hawker Hurricane, Curtis P-40 Warhawk, Bell P-39 Air Crowbar, Bell XFL Air Bonita, Vault XF-4U Corsair, Grumman F-4F Wildcat, and the Brewster F-2A Buffalo. The officer in charge of the test stated in a 1985 letter to the president of Grumman, and I quote, I remember testing the XF-5F against the XF-4U on climb to the 10,000 foot level. I pulled away from the Corsair so fast I thought he was having engine trouble. The F-5F was a carrier pilot's dream as opposite rotating propellers eliminated all torque and you had no large engine up front to look around to see the LSO. The analysis of all the data definitely favored the F-5F and the Spitfire came in a distant second. End of quote. The Skyrocket was well on its way to becoming the first twin engine carrier fighter with performance superior to its single engine counterparts. However, the Navy senior officers were concerned over the difficulties of mass producing a twin engine fighter as well as the significant logistics challenges of maintenance and spare parts on board a carrier at sea. Based on these concerns, the Navy ruled out the Skyrocket and the Bureau settled on the Grumman F-4F Wildcat for mass production. After cancellation, the XF-5F 
was used to conduct additional flight tests in support of the development of the more advanced twin-engine shipboard fighter, the XF-7F Tiger Cat. The Skyrocket continued to be used in various tests, although plagued by landing gear problems. In December 1944, the aircraft was making an approach to NAS Floyd Bennett Field and the undercarriage would not come down. The resulting damage from the belly landing was deemed beyond economical repair and the aircraft was struck off service the next day. And now, while we finish our flight in the Skyrocket, I would like to introduce the two aircraft that I mentioned earlier, the Brewster XSBA and the XSB2A. In 1934, Brewster won a contract from the U.S. Navy for one prototype scout bomber designated the XSBA. It was a two-seat, single-engine monoplane with retractable landing gear and an internal bomb bay that could accommodate a 500-pound bomb. The crewman in the rear seat was armed with a flexible 30 caliber machine gun. The prototype first flew on 15 April 1936 and was delivered to the Navy for testing. Less than a year after its first flight, the aircraft was given a revised tail and rudder and a more powerful 950 horsepower Wright 1820 Cyclone radial engine, with which it reached a top speed of 263 miles per hour making the XSBA the fastest single-engine bomber in the world at the time. Because of the pressure of developing and producing the Brewster F-2A Buffalo fighter, Brewster was unable to manufacture any production models of the XSBA, and the Navy acquired a license to produce the aircraft at the Naval Aircraft Factory. In September 1938, the Navy placed an order for 30 production aircraft, but due to pressures of work at the NAF, the first aircraft, now designated the SBN, were not delivered until November 1940. The remaining aircraft was obsolete when finally delivered between June 1941 and March 1942 and never saw combat. The SBNs were passed on for use as trainers aboard the aircraft carrier USS Hornet CV-8. With a lack of spare parts, the aircraft were withdrawn from service in August 1942. The SB-2A Buccaneer was a further development of the Brewster SBN with a larger 1,700 horsepower Wright Cyclone R2600 twin-row air-cooled radial engine. It carried up to 1,000 pounds of bombs in an internal bomb bay and was fitted with a power-operated turret with two 30 caliber machine guns supplementing four forward-firing guns. The U.S. Navy ordered a prototype XSB-2A on 4 April 1939, which first flew on 17 June 1941. In spite of being overweight and underpowered with poor maneuverability, a total of 1,052 SB-2As were produced for the United States, the United Kingdom, and the Netherlands combined. The SB-2A never saw combat, and the remaining production orders were canceled in 1943, with many new aircraft being sent to scrap salvage direct from the production line. The remaining Buccaneers were relegated primarily to training roles and target towing tugs.